All right, so I'm logged into my Binance account and I have 0 0.001 Bitcoins worth about $8.93 in US dollars. And I'm interested, interested in figuring out, you know, how to make some trades, how to analyze some data sets and figure out some kind of automated trading system. So the first step I'm going to take is finding some data. And the way, the first method I'm going to use to obtain crypto data is using Binance WebSockets. So as we've covered in other videos, uh, WebSockets are, are a way to stream data in real time and you can connect to WebSockets with a variety, in a variety of ways. You can use either a command line tool like WSCAT, uh, you can use a JavaScript to connect to WebSockets from a web UI for instance, or you can use Python, uh, Python WebSocket client in order to connect to uh, these WebSockets and respond to messages based on what you receive in these uh, WebSocket streams. So uh, I'm in the Binance documentation, uh, the official API docs here, and this gives me the information that I need in order to connect uh, to the Binance WebSockets. So it looks like we have a base endpoint here at wssstream.binance.com and it's port 9443, right? So I have that, and I'm gonna put this at the top here. I'm just jotting some things down as I go, that way I can copy and paste them into my terminal or into my code. So I have my base uh, URL here, and then it looks like you can subscribe to a raw stream by appending this dash, or this slash WS, and then the name of a stream. And so the name of the stream is just like, like a ticker, uh, it looks like this. So if you want to subscribe to uh, the Bitcoin USDT stream, you can uh, you can subscribe to that stream, but you need to specify if you want uh, the trade stream, for instance, which will show you all of the raw trade information. But there's also this K line, uh, this candlestick stream here, where you can specify you're only interested in a particular uh, time frame rather than just seeing each individual trade. So we're going to try both of those methods. And so the first way I'm going to connect to this stream is using uh, WSCAT, which I've covered in some of my previous videos. So to do this, if you want to follow along, make sure you have Node installed. If you don't have or have it already, you can just download and install it. I'm using Mac OS X, so I already have it installed and uh, you can install the package wscat so you can use the npm command the node package manager and you want to install wscat and so i'll just show you how that looks real quick um, i already have it installed and up to, up to date so you, i have that and so on my command line here if i type wscat you'll see a variety of parameters including this dash c that lets you connect to a websocket server so what i'm going to want to do is to wscat-c and I am going to connect to this WebSocket server and I'm also going to append a particular stream here and so what I will do is take this uh, wss colon slash slash stream binance and then I want all the trade data for uh, Bitcoin and it looks like there's no special authentication required here um, you can just this is just wide open anyone can subscribe to this and just get a real-time feed of Bitcoin trade data so I'm gonna do that and you can see just like that, uh, I get a stream of messages coming in. It's kind of hard to see because it's blue um, on my command line, but you see uh, we have uh, all these trades coming in. It's just scrolling down my screen and I'm gonna copy this to another window real quick. But yeah, just tons of trade data coming and then I'm just gonna stop that, right? So let's, let's look at that for a bit. Let's see what we get. So uh, in a WebSocket, you send it some kind of message or subscribe to a stream, and then you get messages back from uh, the WebSocket in JSON format. And so you see uh, we have uh, this JavaScript object that has a bunch of keys and values. So you see our symbol, and it looks like we have um, this T, I think, is a Unix timestamp. So if I were to uh, put this into unixtimestamp.com, for instance, and I'll do that just so you see. Uh, this is a timestamp and a price. And so I'm going to go to unixtimestamp.com. And it's just a utility you can use uh, to see uh, what a Unix timestamp, which time it refers to. And so uh, it gives me the milliseconds as well. So I'm going to delete the last few digits. And you see um, that trade occurred on May 24th which is today at 6.42 p.m. UTC. And since I'm in Pacific time, it's actually 11.42 a.m. when this occurred, right? So we have a timestamp 
and then we have a price so it looks like a uh, bitcoin at that time was trading at eight thousand nine hundred sixty four dollars and sixty three cents um, and then we have some other uh, some other data here so if you look at the documentation you can see uh, what do you, you have an event type it's a trade um, you have your timestamp which is your trade time um, you have a buyer order id and seller order id and you have a price quantity and so forth so that's how you get real-time uh, data over websockets from binance right all right so um usually i'm not as interested in getting every single trade some people might have a strategy that uses every single trade for some reason but usually i'm in interested in um, a candlestick uh, if you're a day trader right you might be interested in let's say the 15 minute time time frame or the hourly time frame right uh, and if you're a swing trader maybe you're only interested in candlesticks for the day or the week or the month right because your your time frame is a little bit longer so um, since we're doing a real-time stream right now uh, I'm going to do a time frame let's just do five minutes to start and see how that looks so I'm gonna try this candlestick stream so um, it looks like you just pass a symbol instead of at trade you give it K line uh, I think I, I usually don't use that term K line I usually just say candlestick um, so you give it a Klein or K line and an interval, and I think K line is just another name for candlestick charts. And so let's give it a five minute interview in interval. So I'm gonna do that, All right? And I'll do that, and then I'll put this, and then underscore five M, right? And I'm going to run this one more time. And so I'm gonna do uh, wscat C, and then subscribe to that stream and see what happens, right? And then look at that. So I'm getting some data, but it's coming in a little bit slower. And you'll see that I have uh, a different format, right? So we have a timestamp. And you see we have more uh, data coming in, but you'll notice this timestamp isn't changing. And I think that's because uh, I specified a five minute time frame. And so we're just seeing uh, five minutes of data. And so if I take that timestamp, for instance, we'll know what bar we're on. And so let's go back to Unix timestamp right right and so you see this is for 6 45 p.m utc right and so uh, this isn't going to change for a while it's uh, it's not going to change until we change uh, minute bars and so this data is just going to keep coming in and whenever we change to uh, 650 for instance you'll see a new timestamp there um, and so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and look at it here and just so we can see the structure for the candlestick uh, data and how it's a little bit different. So you see we have this uh, extra dictionary or object uh, nested inside and then we also have uh, and let me let me put this in a new notepad just so we can prettify it a little bit. So I have this little prettify JSON thing and let's see if yep there we go. So uh, for this you see uh, we have our symbol for Bitcoin right and then we have our timestamp here. And so this is a five minute time interval. And then we can see the OHLC data. So for that particular candlestick, we know the current open, high, low, and close. So that candle opened at 89.68 and 60 cents. And it's not closed yet, but I think it updates this closing time. As we get more and more data, uh, you'll see this closing uh, candlestick uh, once it actually closes, we'll know the final closing value. And then the high and low are going to be adjusted as we get more data. So you'll see if I scroll down, right? Uh, I look here and let's see what the current values are for that exact data, right? So I'm going to paste another one of these in and then prettify that. And there we go. And let's just compare like what we're getting now versus a second ago. So we're still on the same uh, timestamp, the same five minute candlestick. And then the open should stay the same because it's still the same candlestick. So we have the open of 896.6, right? So the opening price is the same, uh, but you'll see the high is still the same, but you'll notice the low for that candlestick went from 89.6 to 89.45. to So we're updating the highs and lows uh, as we go. Uh, it still hasn't went above 89, eight, $8,969.40, so the high, that's still the high point, um, and the close is getting adjusted as we get more and more data. So eventually, uh, this candlestick is gonna close, and then we'll have the final value for the open high, low, and close uh, for that particular five-minute candlestick. So that's all good, now what?
So maybe I don't want to just stream this to my console. Maybe I want to capture this output to a file so I can save it for analysis later. And so what I can do here is rerun this command and then I can pipe it with this pipe and then I'll do it to the T command, which will output it to my console, but also save it to a file. So I'm going to save it to dataset.txt, right? And so this will stream it, and you'll notice it continues to uh, output the information uh, to the console. But then whenever I end this command line program, you'll see that we have a file called dataset.txt that where we've captured all of these all of this candlestick data to a file that way if we want to uh, use a program later to uh, analyze this data set uh, we can do so and so a lot of people have been asking me uh, do you know where I can get historical option data or historical future data or any historical data sets um, and a lot of companies charge a lot of money for all this historical data but uh, if you can use your own tools and just capture them day by day you know maybe snapshot your own historical data set and just build that up over time uh, leave something like this running for days or months or whatever time frame you're interested in and you know capture and save your own data to a file you know it's not that it's not that complicated so um, now that that's done, you can see we've rolled over to a new five minute candlestick. So I wanted to show that. And so you can see this timestamp is updated, right? And so if I type this timestamp in, and that includes the milliseconds. So what I've been doing is taking off those last three digits and I'll show you it's rolled over to the 50 minute mark there. And we've rolled over to a new candlestick. And now when I stop this program, control C, I look and I have this dataset.txt. And so now if I look in my directory, there's this dataset.txt with tons of data, and we can use it later. So we could capture as much of this data as we want and then process it later if we want to, if we, if we don't want to deal with it in real time at the moment. All right, now that I've shown you how to connect to a WebSocket from the command line, you might be wondering how you can connect to it from your favorite programming language. So the first one I'm going to use is JavaScript, so we can include uh, this WebSocket data and stream it onto the web and create some charts from it. So uh, let's create, so I have this directory called CoinView, which I'm using for this project, and I'll publish the source code later. So if you see, I'm in this CoinView directory here, and I also have Visual Studio code open, and I just open the CoinView directory, which is pretty empty. It has my readme uh, about what we're gonna do, and it has this data set that I just saved. So let's just create an index.html, just to start super basic, right? And so I can do uh, HTML, right? And I'll do uh, CoinView is what I'll call this app because it's like kind of a training view for crypto and it's just a little small lightweight uh, UI right so we have a head and right I need a title uh, you don't need one but I'm just gonna do it since it's quick right and I'm gonna do a body right and I'll just say hello and let's just open this file in our browser to make sure we're good so I'll do that and so let's go to projects we got coin view and we have an index.html, and it's just a hello website, right? And so now what we want to do is connect a WebSocket. So uh, I'm going to open the JavaScript console. I'm using Chrome, and let's see how we use WebSockets from JavaScript. It's actually very easy. So writing WebSocket applications, right? So JavaScript has this WebSocket uh, object that's built in, and you can instantiate it and connect to a WebSocket. So let's try this example, right? So open that and then in my head here let's just do actually I'll do it at the bottom at the end of the body it's processed right and I'll do a script tag let's do an example socket and I am going to take the WebSocket address that I copied earlier for the K line or the trade data right all right so I'm gonna get that I'm gonna copy it and instead of this address, I'm going to use Binance. And I don't need this second parameter. It's just something optional. And let's see if we can log that and see if this runs. Right. So I'm going to reload the page. And you see I logged this to the console. And it looks like we have some kind of web socket. We have an object here. And so, yeah, what's happening? I don't know yet. So we, we have this web socket connection, right? So what do we do next? We need to actually receive the messages from the WebSocket. So let's go back to uh, the Mozilla documentation, for instance, and you can send data to the server or you can receive messages from the server. And so what you need to do is define an on message function. 
And so that function just says, what do you want to do when you receive a message? So uh, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it Binance Socket. And I'll say, when I receive a message, so Binance Socket on message, we want to execute this function, right? So I'm going to execute that function and log it to the console. So let's see what our data looks like. So I refresh it now. Example, socket's not defined because I'm not using that anymore. I renamed it. All right, so I refreshed it. And now look at that. We have a web page already that's using JavaScript to connect to a Binance WebSocket, and we're streaming trades from Binance to the web. Awesome, that was really quick. Uh, we started from scratch from an empty file, right? So let's pretend we don't want those in the console. Um, we could actually make a div here, and then we could do, uh, we could call this trades div ID equals trades. And let's just start that empty. And instead of hello, let's just type H, little heading here, H2, and we'll just type it trades. And then instead of just console outing it, we can do, um, here we can do a div we can do uh, document dot get element by ID and then we'll do trades and then so we'll create a variable called trade div and then that's going to be equal to uh, this particular element on the page we're going to get a reference to it so now in our on message event we're going to uh, process this event dot data so we have this this is actually a JSON string but we want to access it as an object. That way we can pull out individual attributes like the price and the timestamp. So what I'll do is I'll create a new variable and I'm going to call it a message object and I'm going to set it equal to json.parse event.data and then we'll be able to access this like an object and we'll be able to type things like message object.p for instance to access uh, this price attribute, right? So now what we'll do is take this trade div and then we'll just append message object dot uh, message object dot p, right? And it should just append it to the div. So I'll reload the page and look at that. I have a uh, real time price data and it's just getting appended to the web page over and over again, which, which is great. So we already have at the start of a UI, we have a way to connect from WebSockets using JavaScript and a way to append those to a web page. So uh, I think this video has gone on uh, quite a bit. So we've learned how to connect to Binance WebSocket data from the command line and also connect it to it from the web and show show it on, and we're able to show that price data on a web page now. So I think I'll do a quick break here and take a break. I'm gonna go outside, uh, bike around, walk around. Uh, and then when we come back, I'll actually hook up this real-time price data to this uh, lightweight charts. And we're gonna try to do this uh, real-time uh, web socket uh, candlestick chart here uh, using Binance data. So uh, stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching.